Bags down, spikes on. Welcome to the track. Hi, my name is Colin Waitsman. I'm going to be your host for this episode of Track World News presented by Track Barn. And today we have a very special guest that's going to be joining us. Uh, he is two time NCA champion, Olympian, as well as qualifier for the world's finals, Norwegian national record holder, Simon Gutormsman. Sa Sandre, welcome. Uh, did I say Simon? Oh yeah, it's, I was looking at I was looking at the computer name. Sorry, Sandre. Sandre. It's crazy to think, but summer is finally over. If you don't want to be looking crazy on your first day back to school or on your first day back to fall training, the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped, has you covered. Manscaped just sent me their brand new performance package, which comes with the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer. Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold all your goodies. Look, I've tried a lot of razors in my day, but the Lawnmower 4.0 is just different. Its ceramic blade helps reduce grooming accidents, LED light allows you to shave anytime, anywhere, and since it's waterproof, you can even take it in the shower if you want. You know what they say, look good, feel good, feel good, run good. If you want to show up to fall training and dominate like a beast, make sure you use code TWN at checkout when shopping with Manscaped and have an awesome fall training. We'll see you there. <laughs> you're good. You're good. I, I was using my brother's computer for this because my, my web camera is broken. So you're all good, man. Yeah, I was like, I said, it was the, you're like, huh? I was like, oh, wait, snap, <laughs> messed it up. My bad. Sandre, uh, thanks for, for taking the time. Appreciate it, dude. Of course. Of course. Anytime. So um, I've, our first time we interacted, this was so it's probably been about what seven months or so ago. It was at the National Pole Vault Summit out in in Reno. So for those that don't know about the the Pole Vault Summit, it's this really cool giant convention. There's like 12, 13 different pole vault pits going on, uh, and a whole, whole bunch of vaulters and community going and, and competing. Music. It's a lot of fun. If you're ever in the area in, in Reno in, in January, or February, go check it out. But you're able to you're able to compete there. Um, you know, flat, I know we're flashing back uh, a whole lot uh, of time, but you know, what, how how was your experience? Uh, you know, there at uh, at the pole vault summit. It was great. Uh, I've been to pole vault summit about three or four times now. First time I think was 2011 when I was like 11, 12 years old, little guy. And uh, dude, it's been fun every time. And um, I hope I can go every year. Uh, it's a bit of a more, it's a little longer travel now from New Jersey than from UCLA, but you know, it's, it's always fun. It's um, a lot of fans there uh, and it's always fun competing with the, with the leads there. So yeah, love it. Yeah. One thing that was, was funny actually. So on my way there, cause I'm also coming from New Jersey. Uh, I saw your coach uh, in the airport, like, cause I was, we were in like Texas at the time going to to Reno and like he had a Prince like a Princeton track and field shirt and like there's there's not too many people that are going to be wearing Princeton track and field going or it's got to be there's got to be some relation I was like hey by any chance are you going for the the summit he's like yeah I'm you know their coach so I was like oh that's that's pretty funny so I was able to, to see him uh for a little bit yeah I think he flew out a, a day later or so so yeah yeah but uh yeah that was an awesome awesome competition and been a been a lot of fun and uh, I've been I've been seeing so you've been able to you've been vaulting competing for for a while now. Like you're, the, when when was your how did you start off with with pole vaulting? What got you interested in, in the sport there? Uh, you know, in, in Europe, we kind of start doing all track and field events like you join a club and then uh, you kind of do everything like probably uh, except for like long distance. But I did almost every event I did because it's few decathlons here and there and um yeah, and then you kind of just filter it out uh, depending on what you like and what you get good at. So, like, I just kind of started filtering out events and did pole vault hurdles javelin for for quite a while and then filtered that out to just pole vault and hurdles. And then I ended up getting a little better at pole vault than all the other things. So we kind of stuck to that and I had the most fun doing it too. So, yeah, was it, I, you, I know you have, you know, you, I think you have three, three other brothers, right? It's... Is that right? No, I, I have two brothers, two brothers. Uh, Simon, 21, and um, I have a sister who's also pole vaulting. She jumps about, what is it, 363, close to 12 feet, I think. And Sebastian, who's uh, 14. There you go. Yeah, I was going to say, like, so is, is pole vaulting, is that just in the, the, the family blood? Is it running the, the family or are you the, the first guy to kind of get started there? 
Um, my dad did it as a kid, but he was a hurler mostly. So he just did it as a kid and he loved it. So he wanted us to try it. And then I think it's kind of just, just happened that we all started liking it a lot. And yeah. Were there any other sports that you also played? I know you, you mentioned you did a lot of different events in, in track. Were there ever, you know, soccer? Yeah, absolutely. Or basketball? I played um, handball, which you Americans probably don't even know exists. Oh, I know ham. Oh, I, oh, I love handball. Olympic handball. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's in the Winter Olympics, but uh, I played that up until I was about 15, 16 years old. Um, pretty much like three, four days a week. So it's it's, it's pretty competitive and, and um, lots of fun. But then track was, was was really my main thing. And I, I knew that I would eventually stop playing handball one day uh, to fully pursue track. So, um, but I, I did enjoy it a lot. Very social. Um, yeah. And when I was younger, I did a little bit of soccer, a little bit of gymnastics, but that was, that was more for fun and not very uh, serious. Oh yeah. Well, I'm, I'm a big fan of handball. Somehow a couple, like a year ago or so I got trapped on handball TikTok. So it's all on my, all on my feed. That's like, I, I see them like getting ready, like with the, the stick them or whatever on the, right. on the ball. I use the same sticky stuff as they, so. There you go. That that's actually one of the questions I got for you later on. Well, well, I'm sure I wanted to, to get into, get into that. And so, you know, as, as you started progressing, um, you know, in the vault, uh, before getting older, I saw a video on your, your YouTube channel of like a home pole vaulting setup. Like it, it's like a couple like mattresses and foam things. Like where did that idea, you know, come from for you with, you know, setting up the, you know, the, that home thing a couple, a couple years back. Yeah. Uh, I think I saw Renola of Lenny post something on YouTube about a home pole vault. So I was. Uh, and I knew Mondo also had a pit in his backyard just from like Instagram and YouTube and stuff like that. So I, I wanted to, to try to see if I could make something similar. Although fun, funny enough, I actually have a whole full track with pole vault and everything just about 150 meters from my house. So not that I very much needed it, but it, it was very fun in the summer uh, to set up and build and, and record a few videos. We had a little bit of like, um, when we changed the track surface out there, uh, we got a little leftover like track pieces that we just kind of put um, behind our our house and yeah we had some random mats and stuff so I just kind of it was a lot of fun uh, it's uh, not very functional anymore but <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot of fun I was gonna say is it, is it still in the in the backyard or has that thing kind of is, is it is it gone by now uh no we we took it away to have space for some other stuff but there you go. Yeah, I, I, I went back and I just like today and I was like, oh, I forgot that I watched this video like seven years ago. And I was like, oh, wait, yeah. was, <laughs> that yeah. was that was you. That, that's that's crazy. Uh, and so you, you mentioned like you'd seen a few other like vaulters, you know, had these these backyard pits and, and stuff like that. You know, gr growing up when when you were watching like the sport, like who are some of those? You know, the vaulters that you you know really like watching or, or seeing compete or maybe try to model your your own methods uh after um i watched a, i watched like everything i bought there's these uh things called neon vault neo vault or something like that and there's like five of them i think like cds like old cds uh that was made around it's like when dean starkey was jumping and a lot of the other americans like jeff hartwig and all of them um so I watched, I watched those over and over and over again. I, I like remember all the music in them and everything. Um, but yeah, I, I liked, I watched and analyzed all the different techniques and styles, but I think I always was a fan of, of how Sergey Bubka jumped. And I also liked uh, Renaud Lavlani, definitely a different style, but I try to take like things from, from different people that I liked um, and then kind of like, see how it worked for me the different styles a little bit and um yeah so like something with Renault Lavlani I really like and then there's something with um Sergey Bubka I really like so mm -hmm. uh, yeah it's just yeah. small details here and there that, that you try to do yeah I mean I know that uh Bubka is still like he's still involved with the sport obviously with um you know some of the administration stuff uh side of things like have you been able to meet him before i don't know if you've been able you know to uh yeah I, I met him briefly and took a photo with him in the in the tokyo dining hall but that that was that was about it <laughs> yeah and I, i'm sure that was pro was, was that during the the olympic uh yeah it was yeah it was i just happened to run into him so i was like 
what's up <laughs> oh cool no yeah it's like one of the you know, one of the one of the greats in the in the sport yeah. that's that's cool dude and then you mentioned it earlier you know uh with with the handball with the the sticky stuff that you have every time that i see in competition you and your brother got like a whole a whole bunch of stuff on the hand and i've seen it with it's like different bolters of different things so like some people will have like nothing and just tape and then some will have just chalk like what's what's kind of your concoction that you use for the sticky stuff and does it change at all like depending uh, yeah. on well the, the meat i think the sticky stuff is more a thing more common in europe um i don't think it's really a thing in, in america there's some guys who use it but they don't have the same the, st the stuff we use, you can really only get in Norway and Sweden for some reason. And I know the Australians, whenever they go to Sweden, they will, whenever they go with other Swedish vaulters or Norwegian vaulters, they will ask us to bring like 20 cans of that stuff. Because like, you really can't get anything like it. Um, I don't know what is in it, and um, but it's it's super sticky and super grippy. Uh, so you really stick. There's, there's similar things in the US, but I've tried it when I was there when I didn't have my stuff. And definitely not as good <laughs> uh but it's really like i mean whatever works for you works you know like if you use chalk if you grew up on that then then that's that works for you but i think for me it was whenever i started using it and trying it you kind of get hooked on it and I, everything else feels just uh, like uncomfortable and impossible to jump so i i couldn't i couldn't jump with chalk and if, even if i tried <laughs> it would have to take a while to like get used to not having sticky and get back to chalk but mm -hmm. um yeah it makes your your hand black and it's not too hard to remove so it's it's kind of just whatever a bunch of um it's very common in russia i believe they have that same tape and the same similar spray mm -hmm. um yeah and a few other places in europe but not so much in the u.s yeah, I was gonna say. So, is it is it like a spray or a paste or like what kind? Yeah, of it's a it's a spray. So we got this. Like sometimes you run into problem in airports and stuff, and then you'll open your bag and it'd be like a little ticket in there saying like, "Hey, we checked your bag. Like, we removed your sticky spray." It's only happened like one time, and luckily my dad was flying in the, the day after, so he was able to bring me some. But I guess there's something with the the gas or whatever. But it's 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 just it's just sticky. It just feels sticky, and you spray it on your pole, and then with the black tape, your hand gets all black. I jumped today, so like still got some uh, stuff. Yeah, didn't have that much time to remove it. So yeah, there, there you go. Yeah, like I I would always see like different types of people and like having their their like their own like concoction. Like one of my vaults. So he was a senior when I was a, a freshman. Um, Chris Chris Williams. He he vaulted at Washington. Like he had his he had a, someone that had like. It was like tape and chalk, and then they use like lighter fluid and like just create like. Yeah, I've I've, I've tried everything. Yeah. I've tried the lighter fluid too. It's it's a similar thing. So sometimes I do a lighter fluid with the sticky stuff if it's really cold or something like that to make it more like liquidy. It's a whole like fucking freaking chemistry. <laughs> yeah, it's like some Breaking Bad stuff. You just you yeah, know, break the chemistry set. Like figure it out. You know, try to try to get it done. No, that's yeah. awesome, man. And uh, so when you're you obviously you, you've been competing and you, you've been training a lot with your your brother uh simon uh and so what's how long was it that you know how did you did you get him interested in in vaulting or was it kind of just like uh you know he he also thought it was interesting kind of it was kind of at the same time like we would go out together like simon and i and dad then we would try it and first it was only like a few times like like it'd be like three times a summer maybe and then the next year it'd be a little bit more this was like when we were like seven years old uh, and it wasn't and then it started maybe around like nine and ten we started doing it like weekly uh, and then at 11 um we would do it like twice a week and it kind of became our thing while we would also train like the other events but pole vault was already then like kind of our main thing and like I like that would be the only sport or event where I would like watch YouTube videos of other vaulters. Like I would also high jump and, and do all these other things, but it wasn't like my thing. It was more like for fun. And I enjoyed doing lots of different events because it was a lot of different techniques. And um, yeah, but it's it was Simon and I who would go like together um, to do it and some summer nights we would when the sun in norway doesn't set until like midnight sometimes we would be out there for for long filming taking pictures and making videos and just jumping all night pretty much so yeah, yeah. 
that's that's got to be great to have you know an excellent training partner friend brother that you're you're with like competing in the in the same sport um you know like so how, what's like a practice kind of like i mean are you guys like yell like bickering at each other yelling are you are you competitive like what's kind of like that that like having you know someone else that's so competitive uh i mean no it's not i mean you're really like in your own lane so like uh whenever we're jumping together with the coach like i unless i'm like trying to help him out like trying to like give him cues like other than what coach would do like um i barely see his jumps <laughs> in practice because uh you're so focused on yourself and your own jump and and you're recovering between and staying hydrated and all that stuff so like um yeah if we're jumping at the same time with coach like yeah, we, it's you're you're in your own lane, and um, but sometimes, uh, kind of recently, we've started trying to jump individually, so like not together. Um, sometimes with like an hour between, like so I would get, I would jump for an hour, and then Simon will start warming up, and then he will uh, watch me jump, record, film, all that stuff, and then later I will do the same for him. So then it's easier, kind of like. Okay, now I'll focus on me when I jump, and then I'll focus on Simon when he jumps instead of jumping together. So mm. it's kind of something we figured that um, works better, and then we don't have to like deal with like if we want the bungees at different heights, or if someone wants to jump with the bar and someone wants to jump with the bungee, and you could kind of take your own time. And yeah, I guess it's yeah, but yeah, it'll work. I, yeah, I was hearing um, recently that what uh katie najat and uh sandy morris like they don't even like train together like they have the same coach but they're like yeah we we, we vault at different at like different times or, or whatever it is you know just to makes it you know can make it easy you know for people when, yeah especially i mean sometimes you know, sometimes it is fun jumping together um uh, for sure um and other times you kind of want to just do your own thing and not have anybody else to worry about so for sure yeah. And so, uh, what was your your journey, I guess, here towards the towards the states? You know, you're, you're from Norway, grow up there, and then you know, come over to the states for UC Davis your your senior year, and then you know, initially UCLA, right, right. and then Princeton. Like, what was kind of that that yeah. journey like for you? So, um, I was actually born in California because my dad had a sabbatical at UC Davis uh, in '99. Uh, so I was born there, got a U.S. passport, but like, I'm still fully Norwegian. Both my parents are Norwegian. They just happened to to work there for a year. Uh, and then we did the same thing in 2010, 11, also at UC Davis, my dad had another sabbatical. Um, and then the same thing in 2017, 18, when I was a senior in high school, I went to Davis High School, competed for the high school and all that stuff. Um, so then I started kind of just getting like a, I guess the US on my radar and the NCAA and kind of just learning about that um, through kind of just living there and yeah, knowing that it was an opportunity to like combine studies with with track. So I think that's kind of what drew me to to seeking that opportunity and to go on these official visits that I learned about <laughs> was a thing. Um, and then I decided to go to UCLA for two years. And then I, after that, I transferred to Princeton. So that's kind of how I started. I did all my visits but yeah, um, around the country <laughs> and um, yeah, I don't regret it at all. And uh, yeah, it's been great so far. Yeah. And before in, in high school, you you had one of the, like the most viral moments in, in vaulting with your uh, when you in high school, you go up the pole and then climb back down and then go back on the runway and like like nothing happened. Could, could you like take us back to that moment? What was going on in your head and what might have happened after that? You know, with your with the follow up jumps? Yeah, uh, honestly, like. I don't like I remember that day was kind of like it was on raced runway and I hadn't jumped on that in like I don't it was like one of the first times I jumped on that so it felt really weird so I was very inconsistent in my jumping and that jump I think I just took out way too far and I was like shoot what, what am I gonna do what am I gonna do and I just instinct that I just climbed down the pole you know as a pole vaulter everybody's had a jump when they kind of bail and they have to go back but um I was smart enough or lucky enough to <laughs> I guess to just climb down and have no issues with the, with the soft landing right on the runway. And I don't remember exactly if they counted, if I like was able to go back and redo the jump or whatever. Um, but I ended up making the bar at least. And um, 
went on to PR with what was it, 18, two and a half, which was a high school California record at the time. So, and then I guess two years later in 2020, bored uh, doing TikTok and saw the video and I just started posting everything I had of fails, successful jumps, everything. And it kind of just blew up and I didn't really expect much of it because I see like fails like that all the time and I didn't think much of it, but people thought it was funny, so. Yeah, and it's to say it blew up is an understatement. Just on your TikTok alone, I think it has over 30 million views. So yeah, yeah. it's it definitely it definitely grew uh, quite a bit. I I remember so like the two kind of videos when I think of like viral ones, I think of yours a lot, and then Zach uh, McWerther's uh, unfortunate one right. where one, yeah. yeah. So there there's definitely a few. Uh, I I think those the fails get a lot more clicks than the actual good good vaults when it comes to pole vaults. yeah yeah it's it's uh more exciting more meme worthy i guess yeah. you could say <laughs> that's probably that's that's pretty right you, you hit the nail right on the right on the head there and then um so for you you mentioned yeah, you started at ucla and that was like where like, you're away from your brother you know where who you usually would would be competing with or, or training with and then what what was the i guess the decision then to go over to, to Princeton, you know, complete opposite side of the globe, like very polar opposite, you know, ways of living and stuff. Uh, you know, what was the decision to go go over there? Yeah, so it was mostly like a coaching and training environment decision, I would say, like leaving UCLA at least. Um, it's kind of stuck kind of training by myself, doing a little too much stuff by myself and having some issues with the coaching and all that stuff and not really finding my place in terms of like, on the track team i guess uh everything else was great like you know like the school uh amazing location amazing which was big factors in why i chose ucla in the first place like i love california i still do i love la um and the school is great um so it was more like from an athletic yeah like athletically and then um, I didn't really know it was possible to transfer to Princeton uh, until a friend of mine who graduated from there told me that they just started doing it <laughs> like recently. The deadline had actually passed, like the transfer deadline for Princeton had actually passed because Ivy Leagues, you can't just uh, you can't just email the coach and be like, hey, what's up? Can I join the team or whatever? Yeah. Um, I had to do all the transfer stuff that everybody else had to do. Um, and they didn't even know if if athletic transfers was a thing. So they took them like a few months to figure that out. Uh, oh man. <laughs> but yeah, I chose I chose to go. The thing was like, I didn't want to go anywhere else than Princeton because I knew it would be a safe option because Simon loved it. He liked the coaches. Um, I knew it was a good school, obviously, and it's better than UCLA. Um, so I didn't really want to like sacrifice the good academics like to go to like a less academically rigid school. Um, so it was like an easy choice to let's, let's, let's try this. Let's see if I can, I can get in there and get back to training with my brother. Um, yeah. So then they, they figured out my grades was good enough. My scores was good enough. And um, yeah, they, they let me in. <laughs> there you go. Was, was there ever like a plan B for you or, or was it just like a, yeah, Princeton or bus. We 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 just gotta we gotta make it work. So, you know, like when you're in the transfer portal, you're kind of in like no man's land, and um, you, it's not guaranteed that you can go back to UCLA because that would have been my, I guess, my second option to go back to UCLA and then try to maybe graduate in three years instead of four, and then do a master somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, but you never know if coach wants to give you a scholarship after you say that you want to leave because you're kind of like a traitor at that point, you know? Yeah. Um, so since it took so long with Princeton, I was, I, I tried to like look at other options, uh, although I really didn't want that. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm very glad. Is, it ended up, it ended up working. So that's, yeah. that's good. It, it's, uh, it, it worked out, uh, worked out well for you guys. And, um, your, your nervous weeks for sure. Oh yeah. I, I feel, yeah. Waiting, waiting a month. I, I would be nervous after waiting a day, let alone having two, to wait almost two months. Two actually. months. I finished the application until I got in. Yeah. I, <laughs> I would be a nervous wreck for, for two months. Nah, I wouldn't know what I, <laughs> I wouldn't know what I'd be doing. Um, and so this, this past year, like 
not only yourself, uh, but the, just the Princeton program has really been, you know, blowing up. And you guys, I think, came in what third or fourth, like at nationals, or I think fifth indoors, fifth? and what was it, seventh outdoors? Yeah. So team. yeah, you know, two top seven performances, like team performing really well. Like, was it? What's it like, you know, being able to go out to nationals? It's not just like you know one or two people, but you guys are competing as a team, and you know, actually, you know, have opportunities to to do really well and you know bring home some trophies. Yeah, dude, it was it was amazing. When I transferred to Princeton, I kind of thought it would be like a step down in terms of, of athletics. And then I knew they had some good people here and there, um, but dude, it was it was insane. Just when I got there, like I see all these amazing talents, and uh, they're just as dedicated as any other team. Just because uh, just because it's a good academically school doesn't mean uh, they don't, they put in work on the, they don't put in work on the track because. Yeah, it's a very dedicated team of guys and going to nationals with such a big group was really cool. And um, coming from Europe, you don't really get this like team feeling in track because it's really just individual and it's all you and your coach, I guess. So, yeah, having that team, I think um, it meant a lot. And um, yeah, representing Princeton like that is was amazing. So. Yeah, it's it's gotta be nice, but it's like you, you're you got a, a bunch of people that all have the same goal and performing at you know a, a really a really high level. Um, and, you know. Yeah, and and like our team is very we, we're very close um, as a team. We do a lot of team stuff together. Uh, we see each other a lot. Uh, we eat meals together weekly or almost every day. Some of us. Um, so it's it's a great team team feeling. Mm -hmm. And I hope we can continue that for, I mean, forever, but at least for the time that I'm there too. Yeah. And uh, so, something that, you know, if you're not in the, the, the vaulting community, you may not, you may not notice, but it's really cool because you pretty much compete against the same group of people your entire life as like a pole vaulter. Like you've been, you've been competing against Casey Lightfoot since like high school and you're probably going to be competing against him until you guys retire. Like Mondo, like you're competing against this, these same like, you know, elite group for a long time. Like what's it like, you know, being able to grow and develop and seeing, you know, all these people through, um, you know, high school, college, and then, you know, moving on maybe to the, you know, the next. I episode. think it was, especially with my age group, I don't think everybody has it like this because um, I'm born 99 and it must be like, best ever maybe group of uh, of athletes when i was a junior under 20 um we we had like insane group of guys like over 550 uh, which i don't think has never really happened before and so i've competed against these guys <laughs> forever and like since the european youth olympics where uh, bo Kanda was there corrales was there um the year later or whatever mondo was there too uh, Thibaut Collet, who's also a uh, who jumps in the world championships, like all these guys that are are jumping now, we're jumping in 2016, 2015. Um, it's it's incredible that yeah that the the level of those guys are so so good, and I think we managed to to push each other. And also, I mean, also the Americans like uh, Casey Lightfoot and uh, Zach Bradford. And Zach McWhorter, also born in 99. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And then even just, yeah, even you move, yeah, move one or two years and there's still some, you know, awesome people that are just, you know, one year older, one year younger. So it's like that, your whole like generation of that 99, you know, that, that class of what, yeah. 2018, 17 to 19 yeah. is all just like, yeah, going to dominate the, the, <laughs> the world, uh, you know, in the mm -hmm. next coming, uh, these next coming years. Um, yeah. And so this year you're able to do, you're able to pull off the double going uh, one and one, winning the national championship, uh, both indoor and outdoors. Um, first, which one did you, which one meant the most to you? Which did you, you like the, the most? And uh, could you kind of take us back to those, those moments when you, you realize like, oh, you've won? Def I, I'd say definitely indoor. It was um, perhaps the most difficult one and the first one. And I think once I had that, um, I was a little more relaxed going into outdoor because I already knew that that I was an NCAA champion and can kind of just, even though it was pressure being the, the champion or whatever, um, it was still like, I've always wanted to be an NCAA champion. So um, 
but come up very short because I got 10th and what, ninth uh, as a freshman at UCLA. So I knew I had the chance going into indoors, even though the level was incredible and I didn't even have the highest jump um, going into that meet, not even going into the outdoor meet. So, and because I was going through some injuries uh, leading up to the NCAA championship, I, I pulled my quad a little bit, uh, like three weeks out. I actually flew to Germany in the middle of the season, got treatment there for a week, flew back, jumped short approach to win HEPs, uh, not having jumped for like what, 12 days or something and not even knowing if my body would hold up. And then the week after, uh, not having jumped from full approach in like three weeks or so, um, not even knowing if my body would be able to do it. I, I won the championship. So yeah, I knew that like if I knew that I was in physically good enough shape uh, and technically like that, I could jump the heights that I needed to win. Um, but yeah, mentally going through injuries like that is tough. And yeah, trusting your body is hard when, uh, when you're struggling like that. So, oh, yeah. When just a few weeks before you're, you're having to fly, you know, halfway across the globe to, <laughs> to get some treatment and then, you know, come on back and just like try to figure it out. Like, hey, OK, you, you, you know, get tried this out. And now you have the two biggest meets of your season right here. Good luck. See how it works. Like, <laughs> I'd be like. Oh man, uh, I guess we'll, you know, fingers crossed, you know? Yeah, I got, I got, the, the doctor I was seeing, he, he analyzed my injury and he said it was smaller than, smaller injury than the American doctor said earlier. So it kind of gave me, gave me the green light to go out there and compete and, and, and just trust that my body would stay in peace and not fall apart. So um, that's kind of what I had to do. <laughs> yeah. And so this this past year, one thing that was really cool there there so there were two sets of like brothers that were at nationals. It was you and then the Zahafi brothers, who were the the 800 meter people from Texas Tech and Miami. Um, and you guys were the only two to be able to go and podium. I can't remember the last time there were two brothers that you know get on the within the top eight, but you're you're very in a very select few. Like what's yeah. the What's the hope or is, is the goal to go one, two and be like the first siblings to, you know, you know, sweep essentially the. Yeah. The yeah. We've been, we've been talking about it and, and, um, that would obviously be the goal. And, um, I think Simon has been improving quite a bit now from indoors to outdoors and, and showing consistency at higher heights, but, and I don't know who's still left in NCAA who will see next year and how they will be jumping, but if Simon can keep up that improvement and if I can also, I also probably have to improve a little bit to, to, to stay in, it's like, to stay, it's to stay on top. Um, it's, it's definitely possible. Um, and it would be very cool to do it. Um, who knows? Maybe it'll be Simon one, Sandre two, who knows, but there we go. to go one and two, I think would be, <laughs> it'd be a lot of, it would be a lot of fun. Yeah, be able to just take over the take over the pole vaulting world there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then had some some fan questions here for you uh, before we yep. finish, wrap things up a little bit. Uh, so first one, this comes from Kara Morrissey. She says, "What is your biggest lesson that you learned from competing on the world stage?" Uh, oh, you know what? I think I think I just try to learn to enjoy it, to enjoy every second of it, because. When I was younger, it was my dream to be on the world stage and to be in the Diamond League and world champs. And I think when first when I got there, I was more nervous, stressed to um, to succeed. And now lately, I've I managed to enjoy everything, enjoy uh, seeing guys at breakfast, um, hang out after the meet, and just just enjoy the whole the whole thing. And that the results will, will also be better if you do it that way. And I mean, we only can only compete for so long, so we might as well have as much fun as we can while we do it. Yeah, yeah like these, these moments are the ones that you were, you were dreaming of when you were, you know, 10, 11 years old. So you know, yeah. take a second and enjoy it. Yeah, like you said. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there might not be that many. You never know. Like, yeah. Yeah, there's there's all there's always great athletes coming around, and so you never know if you know this could be the last you know last time experiencing this or you know what what's yeah. going to be. So enjoy it, enjoy it while it's here, no, for sure. 
Uh, next one, this comes from Caden PV. He says, uh, how did you overcome, how do you overcome running through if that was ever an issue for you? I think I've only had that issue at one or two practices. So not even like for more than a week, but I think, uh, I guess what more, what I would do if I see someone else or someone I'm helping out coaching or something run through, I think kind of just going back to very, very short approach, very, very small pole, making sure there's no issues. And then doing that a few times, feel comfortable, do two more steps, make sure that feels comfortable, two more steps. Uh, and just make sure you stay comfortable at each run and then just slowly progress. If it takes you um, more than one practice to get out to a long run, then that's fine. Just slowly progress out uh, and don't try to rush it because yeah, then you're gonna dig yourself a bigger hole. <laughs> yeah, take that's something that I had. I had run through issues, and so it's like that's exactly it. Like you got to go back to basics, you know, kind of, you know, re restart all of those uh, all those things. So you no, know, yeah, perfect, perfect advice. Um, question. So I know there's like different types of kind of vaulter people, I guess. Um, would you consider yourself like? And I, I one one person I've noticed from you is like you seems like you can just vault in whatever kind of condition is like hey just let me give me the pole let me, let me line up and run like what would you say are your absolutely if the perfect conditions for you and what would you say are the absolute worst uh conditions that you would have to vault in i guess it depends if you're talking about trying to jump really high or to place really high because to place really high comparatively to the other guys i think i'm really good in mild mild slash cold temperatures and uh rain uh, I grew up in Norway and it rains quite a bit and I've been in a lot of competitions where it's raining and not too hot. So if it rains, I know a few people will be will be psyched out, um, but I normally am not. So yeah, to, to place high rain and not too cold, but like, you know, like 65, 60 degrees, kind of chilly. Yeah. To jump really high though, I'd say 75 to 80 degrees, light clouds or late in the evening. So the sun's not out and the lights are on or whatever mm -hmm. and a light tailwind i think that's pretty much what everybody likes to jump high there you go no i, I like the like that a lot it's uh having the it's it's there's no better feeling than when you get out to the track and you start feeling the tailwind and you're like oh yeah today's today's gonna be a good day yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of the one of the best ones uh next one so this i guess i we might I might alter this question a little bit um but it says this was from sb don xctf she says, uh, who wins in a decathlon, you or Mondo? Oh, I've had this talk with Mondo many times and I don't understand how he can think that he can beat me because he doesn't know how high those hurdles are. And he only really beats me in maybe the 100 meter. I don't know who's, I don't think it'd be much difference in the 400. 1500, we probably both shit. I know I smoke him in the javelin. I smoke him in the shot put. Uh, High jump, we're probably pretty bad, both of us. Maybe he got me, but I think I beat him so much in, yeah, sure, pole, he beats me too. Uh, but yeah, I don't think he has a chance. I'd, I'd love to I'd love to do it for fun. <laughs> um, I'm sure he'll text me if he sees this, but yeah, I'm, I'm confident I would beat him by quite a bit. Yeah. And I've done he, the decathlon. I, I've tried, I threw jab, I've thrown discus. Has he held a discus before? It's, it's, it's pretty tough. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. I was like, I, I you, you've done it. You, you've, done, you've done it before. Yeah. So it, of course, I, I feel like it's, it's an easy win. My, my kind of alternate question, because you're, you're from Norway. And so another guy who also did the multi, um, Carson Warholm. I know he was a, a multi until recently. What do you, how do you feel it would go if it was you versus Warholm in a decathlon? Who would win? I, I have to try to put some numbers down, but I'm pretty sure he would beat me by quite a bit because I don't know. I would probably only beat him in the pole vault, uh, the javelin, maybe, and yeah, maybe not even the discus. I don't know. He's. I mean, he trained for it too, so he he knows all the events. He knows how to get over maybe like four something meters in the pole vault, um, and that's enough when he beats me so much in all the events. He 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 definitely beat me. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay, so you 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 can beat one world record holder, another one I maybe maybe not so much. All right, there. Yeah, we go. I think I can beat a few other world record holders, maybe a shot putter and yeah. uh, 
hammer throw and that kind of stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. We'll line up Ryan Krauser in the in the pole. Bowl. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, awesome. And then um, so looking for actually so. When we're recording this, you're looking forward to Euros, but as of when this releases, you're probably actually competing right now. Um, you know, what, what's looking, you know, what's the rest of this kind of season, you know, look like for you as you, you get ready with things? It's not fully set in stone yet, but I know that I'm going to, um, it's like a kind of like a street meet in Jokrim in Germany, just three days after Munich. Uh, and then there's uh, another meet, Wait, there's it's Lausanne, Lausanne Diamond League street meet. I think is after that, and then Leverkusen, Germany. Uh, maybe Brussels Diamond League, maybe Zurich Diamond League. If I get into Bristol Diamond League, Zurich is the final, so you gotta qualify for that. Um, that might be it. There's maybe one more. Akin, there, there's like six more meets. <laughs> so I'll be on the road when I go now. I pack for Germany. I'll, I'll be on the road for like three weeks, maybe. We'll see. Could be, could be, and then starting it all over again in uh, a little bit with the, all the the fall training. So you're gonna have a a, a hectic, uh, a, a lot of a lot of stuff going going down for you. Um, yeah. And then, so right now you're at is your best 85, 585, 82, 82, 82. So like looking at your vault, I know obviously the magical number six meters. That's what all all pole vaulters are are kind of looking forward towards. Like when you look at the you know what your vault already looks like, what things are, do you hope to tweak? You know to be able to you know hopefully hit that that six meter uh, mark there. I think I have most of the the physical things to do it like. Uh, I've analyzed other six meter vaulters and they're not faster than me. They're not stronger than me. Um, they're not on bigger poles than me. They're not on higher grip. So I think it's really about getting more consistent in my actual vault and, and changing a few or not changing, but getting a little more consistent with a few technical things in my jump. Um, I've, I've had some jumps like my 582 jump was, was, was really good and it was, it was high over the bar. So I know I can, I know that there's not, I know there's not that many things I need to improve on to, to, to jump that, but it's really staying consistent with the pole vault training um, and just hitting a few technical things more often so that I will do those technical things that I know I can from maybe shorter approach or a few times from full approach when I have good conditions um, and the bar is high. Um, so everything like that comes together. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I'm, I'm far off. Um, sure, 582 to six meters sounds like a lot, but um, yeah. yeah, I don't think it will take that long. We'll see. The crazy thing that that, that kind of stinks when it comes to like the pole vault is uh, unlike the hundred, if you run really fast in the hundred, you know, you, you get whatever time you get. But if you jump, you know, six meters over, you know, 570, it's still only a 570 clearance. It doesn't matter how high you are over the bar. So it's like you got to It's got to be at the right moment, you know. You know. So it's all. It's all about timing, which is which makes it even more difficult. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and the day you're feeling really good. Hopefully, it's good conditions too. You know. Exactly. Last uh, last question for you. Um, so there's a lot you can. You've seen pole vault competitions happen in all variety of different places. You know, street meets. You know, beaches. Whatever it is. If you could have a dream location for a pole vault competition, we line up a runway anywhere in the world, you know, where would you want to have uh, a pole vault competition to be like the coolest, the coolest area? That's a hard question. <laughs> I've jumped to some cool places, but it had to be where there's not a lot of wind, I guess. So. be cool to jump inside a big church i don't know if that's uh like ethical or whatever <laughs> yeah, well, cool. what, yeah like that one <laughs> oh, see, like these the huge church. churches you know like um outdoor places i'm trying to think i know there's like there's no there's some places in oslo that would be pretty cool to jump um and especially with the home crowd maybe in a few years i know mondo has his own meet in sweden indoor meet um Hopefully we can try to get something like that in Norway as well. I think it'd be hype. There we go. Yeah, let's, let's get some uh, get some more vaulting competitions. I'll always love it. I, I saw the, the uh, video with with Mondo, the, the music blaring and all that stuff. No, yeah. No, I think I think uh, pole vault is so cool on its own. It, it it doesn't even need track and field. Like you know, like X Games. Yeah. Like 
pull could almost be in the X Games, or it could be its own thing, and we could just do street meets. And sure, we can do the World Championships at the track, but the street meets are really what's uh, what's so fun about pole vault. And then so many more people can see just just the pole vault itself. You can do streaming, and everybody will see all the, all the vaults, and you can actually follow the competition much more than the Diamond League meets. Mm -hmm. And there's music, there's people enjoying eating, drinking, whatever, uh, and you really see close up. And yeah, I think we got to bring the bring the pole vault to the people. I 100% agree. Uh, I've been saying this for years. I think that we need like the vault. It's cool enough on its own. We don't need like there's by adding these other track events that you're, you're you don't know where to look. There's so much stuff. Just put it'd be more. It, it'd be more money for the athletes too if we do it that way. Um, yeah. Because then we can get, say we get like 5,000 people watching just the pole vault and there's 10 or 20 pole vaulters competing. That's a lot more spectators per athlete than if you go to a big stadium and there's, I don't even know how many athletes there are, but yeah. A lot more. Yeah, exactly. You hit that. I agree with you completely. I think we need to, you know, let the, let the vault like have more street competitions, more other stuff, you know, chain mall vault, whatever it is. I'm sure there's plenty of different locations, but I think- Absolutely, that absolutely. Be great. But yeah. uh, Sandre, thank you so much for, for taking the time to do this. It's been awesome chatting with you. Um, you know, where can people go if they wanted to, you know, follow you, social media or anything like that? Yeah, uh, Sandre underscore PV on Instagram and TikTok. That's S-O-N-D-R-E underscore PV for Povol, obviously. Uh, and then YouTube, I think you just search my name, Sandra Gdormson. Um, that's pretty much what I got. <laughs> Perfect. Well, you can DM if you have questions or anything like that. I try to answer as much as I can. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much, Sandra. It's been awesome chatting with you. And thank you to everyone listening. This has been another episode of Track World News. If you want more content, go and follow us over on Instagram at Track World News. We post almost daily over there. Uh, that's going to do it from us here. Have a good one. Peace.